Hello and welcome to My Astronomy Nights. I'm Derek and in this video I'm looking at M97 the Owl Nebula. Now the Owl Nebula is located in the constellation of Ursa Major and it's really well placed this time of year coming right overhead at midnight so it makes for a really good position if you're trying to get an observation on it you can get the telescope directly up and you're not fighting with any atmosphere down near the horizon. Now M97 is a typical planetary nebula. It has a diameter of about three and a half arc minutes and a brightness of magnitude 9.9. .9. Uh, that diameter of three and a half is about four times the size of the planet Jupiter, so you can give you a good idea as to the size you'd be looking at. And the brightness is, it holds really well in its brightness, it's quite even across the disk. So even in a small telescope, when you get it onto the, uh, come away from a Mirac and get it onto the position of the Owl Nebula and M108, you'll pick up both of them. So when you're locating it, you're gonna put bring your telescope up onto Merak and then you wanna move southeast. There was a nice little orange red star there close to it. So if you come across that and you'll, you'll see it. Along the way to the Owl Nebula, you're gonna cross over the Surfboard Galaxy, which is Messier 108. And the two of them make a nice pair and they're just under a degree apart. So if you have a nice wide field setup, you'll see both of them. They have a very similar brightness to the two of them. Planetary nebulae are quite common, but because they are short-lived, you end up with just a few large-sized ones in the night sky at any time, because they, are, they only last for about 10 to 20,000 years, uh, compared in that to the lives of stars, which is in the billions of years. They're quite fleeting. The diameter of the, the bubble of gas is about a light year across, and the, the green tones that you can pick up in a photo, that's to do, that's from oxygen and then the redder ones on the outside is from hydrogen and they are cast off by that central star. Uh, as long, when stars are about less than 10 times the size of the sun, they don't go supernova, but they just cast off that shell as they grow into red giants. So M108 is a barred spiral galaxy. Now the bar is very difficult to see because the galaxy is tilted about 75 degrees edge onto us, but it has a really, a really soft bar running through it. I've never seen it visually, and even in my photos, I find it very hard to bring out a bar, but that's the way it's classed. But more so when you're looking at it, it looks like a bright ellipse, about eight minutes long to two minutes on its short side. So the Owl Nebula is a really nice size to pick up, about four times the size of the planet Jupiter. You can really pick it out um, even in a small aperture telescope. I was using an 82 millimeter telescope and I could see the Owl and the Surfboard Galaxy, which is just about um, half a degree away and they make a really nice pair. You can, you, you can see that the Owl Nebula is just slightly brighter but um, the surfboard then is an edge-on galaxy of about magnitude 10, but they make a really nice pair. Now the camera I was using the, and the telescope at a thousand millimeters, I just, you could just fit them in, but I just centered on the Owl Nebula for the photo I was doing. And then I did another photo then with the monochrome camera on the 82 millimeter to try to get a field of view of both of them in it. For the single image of the Owl Nebula, I was shooting that with the 200 PDS and the GH5 on it. And I was shooting that um, during new moon. So it was just fully black sky and the owl was creeping right overhead. It was um, about a month and a half ago or two months ago I was doing that. And then for my other image then with the 82 millimeter, that was being done during a really bright moon over the last uh, week or so. So it was a little harder to get that, that nice contrast in that one. And uh, on, the, on the first image I was using the GH5. So again, it had its challenges. So I will be trying to swap the mono camera onto that and see if I can get a better image with it. But um, it's quite a strange one. 
the Owl Nebula because it is slightly easier to to view it than it is to pick out the detail in the images, which is quite strange. It's usually the, the opposite of that. You get your image and you can pull out those details in nebulae and galaxies, but for some reason with this one, I find it easier looking at it visually to get that, um, the sense of the owl with those, the, the two holes in it for the eyes. Those dark circles are thought to be either end of kind of a cylinder of gas. So you're looking kind of off center. Say with the ring nebula, you're looking straight down through it, but in this they're kind of off center. So you get the two dark patches of either end of that cylinder of gas with the way it's been blown off from the, from the star. So it's quite interesting when you're, when you're observing it to think of it not as like a, a tight ball of gas, but to have that kind of through way that we're just looking off center at. So M108, then Messier 108, has an apparent magnitude of about 10, and it has a size of about 9 by 2 arc minutes or so. It's an edge-on barred spiral galaxy, and because it's tilted, it gives it that really elongated, elliptical shape. And that's where it gets the nickname, the surfboard galaxy. You can really see that when you're looking at it. it it's quite bright because it's tilted so much. It's, it's quite concentrated, so it comes out really well in any aperture. I found with the 12 inch that it was really nice. It has one bright star just kind of sitting off the edge. And it's a, it's a lovely one to look at. It's comparable to the brightness of the Owl Nebula, even though the Owl is down as being anywhere between 0.1 and 0.9 brighter. It's easy to find. It's only about a degree and a half southeast of Mirac. So you use that as a pointer star off the Big Dipper and you'll find it pretty easy. And when you're using that wide field of view, you'll see the surfboard and the owl in the one field of view. And there's a lovely chain of stars just kind of running down in between both of them. So you can follow that back and forth if you're using, uh, if you're going in a bit with your magnification. Let me know how you get on, whether it's visual or astrophotography, uh, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.